Good morning, friends. Thank you, as always, for being part of Typography 2019 and helping us make it a success. We kick off the third and the final day with an altogether illuminating talk from our vision keynote. Uh, he's going to speak on experimental lettering and calligraphy. For that, we have Professor Antoine Abiyad from Beirut, Lebanon. A designer and an assistant professor at the Lebanese University, the largest and the most prestigious university of Lebanon, Antoine has a DES in advertising from Académie Lebanese des Beaux-Arts Alba, Lebanon, and an MA and PhD from the University Sukuba, Japan. Antoine's prolific work focuses on research and experimentation in typography, calligraphy, and handwriting. The different scripts he writes, which is absolutely prolific, are the Arabic, Latin, and Japanese. The understanding of these have led him to explore writing in all directions, leftwards, rightwards, and downwards, all the time focusing on the relationship between direction, visual communication, and advertising, motion graphics, and animation. Antoine's love for all things graphic design is only matched by his love for travel, he has given talks and conducted workshops in f at least 40 different nations, sharing his experience and knowledge at institutions such as Yale University in New Haven, the Universidad de Brasilia in Brazil, International Design School, Jakarta, Institute of Business and Design, Moscow, Hong Kong Design Institute, Hong Kong, Greenside Design Center College of Design at Johannesburg, South Africa, Nara University of Education, and of course at the IDC IIT Bombay, where he's an adjunct faculty. We are pleased to have Antoine Abiyad back with us for Typo Day 2019, and we invite him on stage for the Vision Keynote. I want to thank you all for uh, inviting me again to India, a uh, very dear country to my heart. I love uh, everything about your country, and I love all the people here, so I really feel at home with my family. You will have to excuse me because I haven't been sleeping uh, for uh, for like two weeks, and I didn't sleep today. So if I make mistakes, <laughs> forgive me. Well, I will be talking about the beautiful ugliness of imperfection. This is my car. Going back from work to my home is not a very pleasant thing, actually. And it's not about me going home. It's about how I go home. And then Mumbai is not the only place where there is traffic jam. So if you want to uh, see how I feel when I'm driving, it looks something like that. It is like 16 photos. Worth 16,000 uh, words. So anyway, I get angry, I honk, I, uh, I blame people around me, uh, I blame my work, maybe my partners, everything, start swearing, cursing, and God has his share of this. And then one day, he called me, he said, Antoine, I said, God, he said, yes, we need to talk. I said, but I'm driving. I said, okay, just come over to my place, Sunday at 10. And then that Sunday, I went to the church. I promised God to be a very good boy. And then, while praying, I was looking at the picture of a tamaro, and then I was wondering, why is he looking leftward? And then, of course, thinking, why not, is the easy answer. But then I wanted a, a better answer. And then, after the Mass, I uh, googled pictures of uh, saints from uh, the Eastern Church. And to my surprise, most of them were looking leftward. So it was intriguing. I was looking for a uh, religious reason. But then uh, Christianity, unlike Islam and Judaism, the direction of praying is not unified. And moreover, I was looking for other saints, and they were looking the other direction. So, the religious direction didn't give me any clue. But actually, there was something else in the, in the picture. And this is another saint from Lebanon. It's written here in uh, Aramaic. The Semitic uh, 
script masharbi means sancharbi and being a semantic script is written from right to left i i took most of the pictures from google so please uh, don't worry about the quality so uh, here's my dad writing in syriac and in arabic both are semantic they're written from right to left this is the tomb of ahiram where there's the first alphabet i don't know if you can see the letters here and i spot a very famous indian there taking pictures of the tomb i'm sure many of you know him here no <laughs> so i'm coming back to uh, saint maroun uh, it's written in arabic al qaddis maroun and as i told you before the direction is right to left and then i thought like actually this saint is looking leftward because of the writing so he's following the flow of the writing again sorry for the quality of the image and then when i look at other saints with uh, greek inscriptions for example they look in the other direction now i'm moving to uh, to animation where there's a law that says like a person moving and by moving i mean walking or cycling or running uh, left, right to left it seems like he's putting more efforts so again i took uh, pictures from google headwind and tailwind headwind means like when you're cycling against the, the wind and vice versa and as you can see like uh, it looks natural when these pictures are going from right to left and vice versa and actually i took another picture which i flipped and i don't know if you agree with me but for me this these two cycles uh, they they seem as if they're putting more effort than the one be below do you feel that okay <laughs> you don't have to agree with me <laughs> but why is it the case when you're flipping a book and there is a picture if the picture goes in opposite direction to the flipping uh, it seems that it's making more effort it's really not following the flow and the opposite is true so if you are uh, an arabic reader you're flipping the the book in opposite direction to the other languages which means that there is something cultural in that i will get to you and luckily enough the people interested in the right to left right to left directions are not only the semitic and i mean uh, not only the arabs or the jews or hebrews or uh, uh, pakistanis or iranians or urdu but there is also the chinese and the japanese i will show you about manga and uh, manga of course the book is read from right to left so this opposite directions actually if you see the action happening in japanese it's happening from right to left with the western comic it's happening in the other direction and there's another example here so these people are running this way and others are running the other way and there's a third example and i'll, I'll go a little bit a sip of academic thing is like directions of saccades or the rapid movement of of the eyes between fixation points depend on the reading habits of different cultures and another opinion says like left to right scanning of pictures may reflect the subject's reading habits rather than his neural organization so all these things about uh, the easiness of of the images from right to left is actually cultural i was very happy yesterday when uh, dr kwok was showing his uh, his picture before and after in hong kong so he showed before and after well usually people say show before and after the opposite direction so is this t-shirt getting dirtier or cleaner who think that this t-shirt is getting dirtier okay and who think that this t-shirt is getting cleaner so i think the big majority and who who is not listening to me <laughs> <laughs> well left or right versus right or wrong i mean i'm taking another example is this person losing or gaining hair it's really arbitrary I and mean, if if i ask my neighbors uh israelis or palestinians 
they will definitely say that this guy is, is gaining here. But if I ask most of you here, I think you will think that he's actually losing here. But when I put it in the context, the guy is gaining hair in Arabic and losing hair in English. With this ugly hair. <laughs> so, the whole thing is like, it's left or right versus left and right. And I would rather talk about left and right because I don't like to see it like left opposing right. And everything we do in life is actually left is completing right. I'll talk about uh, Revelation. I was uh, thinking of her, wondering what she's doing, what's happening to her, where is she now? And I was wondering why thinking about her, the, the pain she's causing in my stomach. Is it this chicken that I ate last night that is causing me indigestion? And while I was downloading, I was looking at the cigarette and thinking, why the smoke doesn't go straight? Why does it go in zigzag? And doesn't look like my stomach actually, which is my first brain and my second brain looks similar and another radiator of the car or a heater or people going down the Mount Fuji. I took this picture, but I didn't take this one. Or uh, stitches on canvas or a road going up and down. People riding upward other things riding downward, animals going down, or people climbing up. I see a lot of things in zigzag. And this beautiful image that I took from Google as well. And when I'm looking at all these images, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. No, 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 no. And I think about all these zigzags actually look like my handwriting. <laughs> this is my handwriting. And uh, you will realize soon enough that I write in Angular handwriting in all the scripts. But it's not about the aesthetics of my handwriting. It's about the contrast, changing directions, and uh, mainly zigzagging. So from this these writings, I moved to another tool, which is the computer. And uh, the tool is different, but the, the idea is the same. It's about directions, it's about rhythm, it's about changing things. And uh, the text is the same, but the order is different. I mean, it looks more like typography here. And again, changing the tool. So handwriting for me is like a pendulum. It's, it goes in one direction and then stops and then changes direction. But the word pendulum for me is very symmetrical. It's, it looks like this. It's, it's like tick, 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 tick. But my image of a uh, pendulum is different. It's like going in this direction and then another one and changing. And all these directions they define the rhythm of writing and uh, by the way, I, I took calligraphy classes, and in everything I write, it's a great example of what not to do in calligraphy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the point is, like, when you're changing directions and uh, putting all these things, the contrast and the rhythm define the letter, and it helps you uh, read, it helps the legibility. And, um, you know, like from a tool which is a pen to a tool which is a computer, the rules are the same. And um, so handwriting, calligraphy, and eventually typography is like uh, slowing down curves and then speeding, which is very similar to Formula One. So these curves, you have this, the brush slowing down on the curve, 
the handwriting is slowing down on the curve, the computer is slowing down, and it goes on the straights. And I think many of you who write feel, share the beautiful feeling of just stretching in, in calligraphy, which is very similar on computer. So if I ask you a thing that contains or goes through wild and unpredictable changes, you might agree with me that calligraphy is this, which is, I believe, this is calligraphy. But according to a dictionary, it's a roller coaster. So calligraphy somehow, these feelings, this little amounts of adrenaline when you're working, it feels like a roller coaster. And it, it really doesn't uh, matter which script you're writing on, which tool you're using, and by tool I mean like a pen or a computer. These curves and these rhythms are pretty much the same. And uh, these are, are all work of my students. Some, some of them are like, have different rhythms. And uh, I'm taking this word, it's sakura, written in hiragana. And if I rotate it, leftward, I mean, at 90 degrees or minus 90, it looks like Latin or Arabic or, or anything, anything but Japanese. It doesn't look Japanese anymore. And then, and I see this word, I mean, it looks awkward to you to see this word. Or even weirder, like this way. I mean... Did you ever ask yourself why it's weird to look at this? I guess most of you ask, but the question is, why not? Why not looking at this word this way? So directions is, are really like a kind of arbitrary. And if I am showing you this uh, calligraphy, who likes this calligraphy? No one likes it? I didn't write it, so you can say no. Do you like this calligraphy? I'm expecting uh, a lot of hands. <laughs> so what is it about like uh, people liking something that they don't understand? I'm simplifying it a little bit. My answer comes with rugby. How? I mean, imagine John Alomu, he was my favorite rugby player when I used to play rugby. He, he died. He's entering from uh, the top and then sidestepping a player and another player and another player, another player, another player, and then going straight and scoring. So calligraphy, actually, what, what I enjoy in calligraphy is the same feeling that I enjoy when I'm watching rugby or when I'm going for a try. It's this rhythm that, that is pretty similar to me. So writing usually tells a story. Every letter has its climax, traits, cliffhanger, or free form. And if you like it or not, it's not the point, but these letters really define the difference between one shape and another, and it helps the reader recognize the shape. And it doesn't depend on the tool that you're writing on with. Now, from a letter telling a story, I'm moving to a storytelling, which is uh, based on a famous story. Henry spots Cinderella. He likes her. So, you know Cinderella? He asks her for her phone number. She likes him, but actually she finds it very obscene. So she hit, her, she hit him with her shoes and run. That is going down. But he likes this in her, her character. He decides to follow her and look for her with this famous shoe trying uh, method. And then he sees her uh, sisters, which they claim that the shoes is theirs, but actually their feet is too big. So Henry hit them with the shoe and leaves. So that's the story. But I'm, I'm using the same points here to tell you another story, a little bit shorter. Which is uh, the character So in Japanese. That's a character. 
similar. And then moving again to the dots, changing the, the background, changing the color of the dots, it looks like tennis. So the whole rhythm is between storytelling and calligraphy or typography and playing sports is this rhythm that someone feels and how letters communicate to you the same way as a storytelling, as a story or as a game. And I think every, every work has, has something in that. Like, uh, and it doesn't depend on the medium. This student work with, um, with wires, Beirut in French and Arabic. Another example, these are names. And uh, others work with, uh, with Indian. But the thinking is the same. It's all about changing directions. It's about defining rhythms. And it really doesn't depend on the tool. So we're passing from physical lines to lines on the computer, like different kind of lines, maybe thinner, thicker, bolder. So zigzagging is about unpredictability and harmony. And if I'm looking at uh, Lebron here, it's just zigzagging, passing one person and passing the other and passing the third and scoring eventually. For me, and I hope that you'll share this, it looks pretty much like calligraphy. Well, it's this way. It's kokoro in Japanese, which means heart. And another example, Messi. I mean, Messi is also doing these things and painting and playing, you know? And for me, this, these movements are pretty much like the movement of a hand. One is, is playing with his body, another one is playing with his hand. And if you see like these things, for me, it looks like this calligraphy. It's all about the rhythm and changing. And but it also looks like this work of a student. And I don't need to tell you that uh, music is rhythm. So it's, it also comes with the zigzag. It looks like thunder, lightning. So you know, like the brain and our skull, it does not see, it does not touch, does not smell or, or taste. I mean, signals in our brain are electrical and these signals make the codes uh, transform, I mean, these signals transform codes to a fragrance of a flower, to the taste of curry, to the beauty of calligraphy. And how beautiful it would be if, if students, you, would practice typography by playing ping pong or looking at, uh, watching, um, a cricket game, or simply listening to Ravi Shankar. Thank you.